and welcome to another video um, on my channel Woodsman's Finest. My name is Max as you probably know by now and um, today I want to come at you with a little overview over a product um, or you could call it a review. Um, as you know recently I came back from Canada and into an actual winter in Austria in Upper Austria here. Originally I'm from the Austrian Alps and this is basically the area where the Alps slowly and slowly become smaller and go into rather um, flat land with um, towards the east of Austria um, and we're really having a gorgeous winter with a lot of snow here uh, which I'm really enjoying so today I went for a hike in uh, the last few days hiking and uh, doing some walks outside I was really really happy for the gloves that I bought um, recently in Ontario um, today I want to talk to you about these gauntlet mittens uh, made by Heights in Hand in Ontario. Um, I bought these actually in Curve Lake in uh, a Ojibwe or Anishinaabeg um, reserve very very close to Bob Cajun where I was living and um, I was kind of eyeing them all year long until the end of my stay um, and I decided to just pull the trigger on these. Um, I've seen them all the way up to Halliburton where there is a, a big big um, wildlife retreat I think you would call it they, they have a wolf wolf research center and they have like a very vast um, protected area where they're doing a lot of snowshoeing and um, 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 riding dog sleds and stuff like that and uh, I saw these on a musha and um, I actually really like them so the product itself we're talking about is um, a gauntlet style mitten that is going about to the middle of your forearm depending on the size but these are large ones which kind of surprised me but I needed large in these so um, they are made from moose hide um, and that brings me to the philosophy of the company a little bit um, Heights in Hand is a um, company located in um, in Ontario and they exclusively use hides that were hunted in Ontario by Ontario hunters. The hides are tanned in Ontario and um, they're entirely made by hand in Ontario. Um, their product line ranges from moccasins, indoor, outdoor moccasins of all sizes and styles, different kind of hides all the way to bags, um, gloves, mittens and so on and so forth. Um, I would like to, to put the link to the to the company down in the description box because I really want to support these guys. Um, as well, you can find these at a shop that I was um, working with a lot and who retails my leather work, custom leather stuff um, and ferro rods, which is the um, Canadian outdoor equipment shop in Mississauga, close to Toronto. Shout out to Tim Foley here, which is a uh, who is a really really cool guy who supported me a lot the last year in, in Canada and who has in my opinion an amazing product range that is not stocking five things of, of each kind like five different fire boxes and and, um, and eight different kind of pots but he really through research and a lot of testing he's just bringing it down to one or two products within a um, category that are just the best out there and um, I think hands down that shop is just an accumulation of high quality and um, sustainably produced mit, um, items and products so shout out to Tim and um, yeah of course Curve Lake if you're located somewhere around the Toronto Kawartha area um, please check out Curve Lake um, the cultural center in Curve Lake um, these heights in hand um, are sold there as well but but Furthermore, and more importantly, it's it's probably the most amazing collection that I personally have seen in a shop and in a cultural center in the reserve. Not to say that there is not others out there, please don't get me wrong, but just my personal small experience with um, cultural centers, it is an amazing collection. I mean, from dugout canoes over um, hide, hide uh, on, on frame made kayaks all the way from, from the very far north to all kind of art and handicraft 
it is absolutely amazing. So check out Curve Lake, um, Anishinaabek um, Reserve um, Cultural Center, please, as well. So back to the gloves after all those shout outs. Um, they're made from moose, as I said, and um, they have a... Let me just take this out of this um, mitten string that I'm kind of experimenting with. On the inside, there is a... Um, an insert from an acrylic type fur. All of these parts are washable. Um, the moose hide as well, it's tanned in a way that you can hand wash or machine wash it. And it actually comes back to this um, beautiful soft material. So I went with the moose instead of the deer because it was way thicker and um, it has even a special feel to it in my opinion to, to, to own something made from moose. Um, and it's just really had a rugged feel to me and quite thick but the heart of the whole thing is, is this insert so they didn't go with a wool insert I think for price reasons as well um, and just for ease of maintenance I think these you can just easily throw in the washing machine um, these gloves go down to minus 35 Celsius folks and um, me personally I have tested in minus 20 and they absolutely held up without a problem so um, I'm sure even if it's going down to minus 35 I can imagine with the extra space you have in here if you had another merino wool finger glove insert or something that would pro probably make these absolutely bomb proof down to minus 50 I personally think although I have really no experience in this um, but I hope to test that out sooner or later in the north of Canada visiting a friend of mine in Nunavut but back to the gloves um, going back into the glove with the insert is I would say compared to other gloves I had is um, not very tricky at all now here out in cold conditions I guess it's a little bit more difficult but it is really not a problem and we're absolutely back to the great functionality um, they feel amazing they're super soft super subtle the color is amazing every glove you get is different because as I said um, they are hunted and tanned and produced entirely in Ontario um, which makes me really proud to own these um, I personally at the moment experiment a little bit with uh, more flexible type um, mitten strings I know there is uh, very nice mitten strings made by all kind of different native people around the world actually um, and um, I'm just trying to modify these a little bit at the moment I'm just going with the hangman's knot here on my wrist that I can just tighten down since they're so long the mittens I mean um, they would not slide out of this knot um, and it's very easy for me to wear them inside my jacket going through or like right now I'm having them behind my my hood I also tried them before having them through the, the shoulder strap of my bag here um, it's all working well um, having it through the shoulder strap here on my shoulder actually keeps them from sliding around a little bit which I actually um, like as well but as I said I'm, I'm just um, trying out some stuff and I just modified these a little bit and I'm probably gonna make another video um, where I just show you the modification that I that I um, came up with and I uh, just um, so you if you feel I can do these modifications then to all kind of gloves so I want to come up with something that um, you can do easily at home yeah so what, what else can I say um, I'm just hiking today a little bit with my 1942 US Army snowshoes that I bought a couple of years ago actually in Austria some uh, GI left them behind when they left my country in 1955 I guess so these are made 1942 um, stamped rawhide um, and laminated steam bent construction and just traditional binding and yeah it's a beautiful day I would say it's about minus 10 something like that um, and yeah what else can I say um, check out their website they have all kind of links not only these long ones but short ones as well there is stuff with fur trim etc etc um, I wanted for me I think um, they were like for me I would say because I bought them at the reserve so I think they were like $90 Canadian um, I think they're even worth more to be honest the craftsmanship 
the stitching is all awesome um, whenever I feel like there is a little bit of wear somewhere um, or some of the fibers standing up actually I read on their website they're getting even tougher when they're like kind of worked in and I so far can absolutely confirm that um, I've tried them the other day with my um, with my camera tripod if I can adjust everything on the camera if I would go out for like an all photography day um, I probably would bring like a small insert merino wool glove or something so I can take them the hands out and like work with the camera a little bit um, turn all the, the wheels and stuff um, without my my hands completely freezing um, minor adjustments I can do with the gloves without a problem I can um, I can zoom I can um, press the, the shutter button and I can do everything on the tripod so um, they're awesome that way too um, as you can see today just a quick turnaround thing um, I'm, I'm sporting my my Austria Alpine gear belt um, which is a custom product that I make with an Austrian military buckle um, I like in in winter to um, after all my 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 onion cloth construction basically um, where I always have something merino style thin on my skin and then I have a thin down jacket and then a cordura type um, outer shell I put myself some raccoon up here which is win vintage from a vintage store so um, that fur has been around already for a while um, so I put this up here and made a button system so it closes all the way to the front um, and then on my gear belt I usually have my Japanese folding saw that you know from a lot of my carving videos um, this is a bag that I also sported in some videos already which is a tinder bag from um, Brain Tent Buffalo um, and on this side I have my hand forged carving axe that you also know already from a couple of videos um, that I did with Paul Trump Blacksmith um, in here I have um, a little bit of uh, aeration like um, I have um, some 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 tea in here in a thermos bottle and uh, a couple of um, granola bars and stuff and this is uh, a bag from Austrian red stag elk um, neck leather really really thick with the friction system and um, I put these um, latico leather straps through the belt so I have the stuff dangling that I need outside my parka but I don't have it dangling in a way that it's that it's um, kind of uncomfortable so these gloves having them and basically having them free um, to, to put them on quickly and don't have to put them on the ground is a very important part um, if this bag was free it would dangle around and get in my way a little bit too much I have to say another thing that I usually use in winter um, is the knives that I make um, in winter I like using um, stick tang knives um, because very often I have to get out of my gloves and then I touch the knife directly and then with a stick tang knife I just have wood all around this is really one of my first knives that I made like six years ago it's um, rather ugly from today's point of view of mine but um, but it still does the job it's a um, it's a silver steel blade from Finland um, and it does the job however what I wanted to get to is um, I'm, I'm nearly only touching wood which feels much warmer right now even at minus 10 this is feeling very very warm um, so this is the reason why you find a lot of stick tanks with all um, where you don't touch any any metal um, in use and um, the dangling system is perfect for winter for me as well because even if I was wearing this under my parka I would still get easier to it than with a bushcraft style western sheath that is riding all the way up on my belt right um, so with this I have a little bit more handle protruding and even with my mittens I can do this style of um, unsheathing where I press my thumbs together and I have enough purchase on these knives that I make that even with thick gloves I have a very very good feel on this knife so um, ever since I made some knives for a musha up in Nunavut in northern Canada really northern Canada um, I make my hands just a slight bit longer because um, he's using these thick mittens with the knife so he needs enough purchase on the handle right and also resheathing with these kind of popping sheaths in winter I think this is the, the perfect um, combination 
um, in op opposite to folding knives that I also make that I really really like of course um, but with the with the the thick three and a half millimeter steel in front of the back um, and also with the handle pins I just always have to touch a lot of steel um, and there is just a pet temperature where I don't want to do that anymore I think I hope that makes sense so yeah just wanted to go through my gear really quickly for today um, if you're wondering um, <coughs> excuse me just got over a pretty really bad flu um, if you're looking for some really beautiful um, extremely warm mittens traditional style um, without doing any kind of appropriation in my opinion um, made all in Canada from Canadian materials um, check out hides in hand um, amazing products and I love mine um, thank you very much guys for watching guys and girls of course that's what I mean with guys um, thank you very much for the support I love all the comments that are coming in people saying like I, I was helping them in any way or also leaving feedback what I can do better thank you very very much um, I'm trying to put out more videos as I'm going with my new equipment you've seen my new camera I have my GoPro now my 60D Canon I'm trying to to make the videos fun and um, entertaining as well as informative um, so thank you very much for watching um, it's still early enough in the year to wish you all a happy new year and um, if you have any um, suggestions or something please just write them in the in the comments section um, so thank you very much folks um, I hope you have a great day today and I'm gonna see you next time Cheers.